Hello, I'm Ryan Gerber, Hunter Product Specialist here at Hunter Engineering. Today we're going to cover some basic operational procedures with Hunter's new Ultimate ADAS. Hunter's Ultimate ADAS is based off of Hunter's Win Align system. Many of you are going to be very familiar with the operation. We can still do wheel alignments, but now we've added the capability of adding ADAS target placement all around the vehicle. So let's start with how do we begin? So the first thing that we need to do is power on our sensors. What we'll do is we'll open the cabinet door on the sensor tower on this side, simply press the button on the power supply for a moment. You will see that it comes on and you can verify with the green light on the PC that it's on. In just a moment, the sensor tower will pair with the console and the display will come on. Once the sensor tower and console are powered up, the laser gimbals will go through a series of movements to initialize. Give it just a moment before continuing. At this point, you'll see some very familiar screens. Here we'll begin alignment just like we would with any of Hunter's WinAlign software. I'll begin the alignment, and if I were going to do just a standard wheel alignment with no ADAS procedures, I could continue by picking a vehicle. However, for today's procedure, we're going to do ADAS procedures. To initiate an ADAS procedure, we'll need a VIN. I'm gonna use the barcode scanner to capture that VIN and move forward. Once the VIN is entered, you'll have a screen here to make sure that we want to do that ADAS procedure. So I will enable that ADAS procedure and I will continue without an alignment. We could continue with an alignment if that were part of our procedure. At this point, we need to mount our wheel targets. You will notice a new icon here on the bottom. Hunter's Ultimate ADAS program has opened. You will also see the win align icon is present. Ultimate ADAS will automatically switch to the correct program for seamless operation. Should you need to manually toggle between the programs, it's as simple as clicking on the icon. To progress, we will need to add a qualifier here. We need to know if this is a four-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive. I'll choose the appropriate four-wheel drive model for this process. With this screen, we will choose what ADAS calibrations we need to do. We can either check those individually or drop down one row on the menu and select all. Returning to the top menu and confirming those calibrations. Now we're ready to compensate the vehicle. Once the vehicle is compensated, be sure to chalk the wheels so the vehicle doesn't move at any time during the procedures. Now that we've returned to the start calibration screen, let's talk about an important thing that we would want to do. Every morning, you will be prompted to do an ADAS gimbal calibration check. Let's go ahead and walk through that so you're familiar with it. Dropping down one row of keys, you'll see a calibration check Simply click that. Our first step is determining home position. Take note of the camera beam and floor plane on screen graphics. These will go through a progression from red to yellow to green as wheel targets are acquired and floor plane is calculated. You may see this progression at different times when moving the sensor tower or blocking camera sight. Should this happen, allow the system to reacquire target vision and recalculate the floor plane to green before continuing. Regarding home position, always follow the on-screen instructions and graphics to ensure that you're in the proper location. Ultimate ADAS will go to its calibration check height. It will instruct you to mount the targets that we've already mounted, and we will now do the calibration check. This is where the red lasers will come out and point at the front wheel targets on the top and the bottom and make a measurement. If the cameras and gimbals are in agreement, then you will get a pass on the screen and you can continue on. Let's talk about the accessories that will come with your Ultimate ADAS. Different manufacturers will require different accessories but let's cover all of the bases. The first thing that everyone will have is this handheld remote. The handheld remote 
will control the console remotely so you don't have to walk up and engage with it. The next thing that all of you will have will be this barcode scanner. The barcode scanner will record different QR codes from some of these accessories for the printout and so that we know you use the correct target in the correct place. Everyone will also have a target rail and target carriages. On those carriages, we will have the target boards that mount to them. Then on the target boards, we will actually have those forward facing camera targets or artwork. If you note on the end of each one of these scrolls, you will see a number. That number will correspond to the on-screen graphics. Also, we have this flat plate radar as well as surround view mats. Surround view mats may be rolled together because there may be more than one mat for a procedure. Again, you will see a number that will match an on-screen graphic as well as QR codes that we will use for our barcode scanner for recording of the correct mat in the correct place. Last but not least, let's talk about the remote stand. The remote stand top will actually move so that you can aim that at the direction that the laser is pointing. The next thing you'll see here is the brake. So the brake will allow this, the remote stand to be placed level to the vehicle. Also, we need to adjust height. There's a trigger here. Pulling that trigger will allow for that height to be adjusted on the remote stand. You'll notice the remote stand has a receptacle on the front and you may, depending on OE, have different accessories that will attach to this receptacle. Simply clip those in and continue on. Now let's look at the base of the remote stand. The first thing we want to point out is the bullseye. The bullseye is for the red dot laser. This allows for spot on placement. Next, we'll have a red line. The red line is to line up with the green line laser that will appear on the floor. Next, you will see these four pegs. You may have a procedure where the bottom of a target will need to be put between these pegs for stability. Now that we've covered the basic accessories, let's go ahead and move on to a procedure.